All right, so as promised, here we go, fractions. Let's do an introduction to the fractions unit. Okay, so let's say we have four pizzas, and person A, person B, person C, and D are eating these pizzas. Let's say that person A eats this much of a pizza. Let's to cut it that way, and eats that much of it. Person B takes their pizza cutter and cuts it this way and eats this much of it. C goes crazy with the pizza slicer and eats this much of it. And D cuts it that way and cuts or eats this much of it of the pizza. All right, here's my question to you. Who has eaten the most pizza? A, B, C, or D? Well, let's take a look. A, person A, has eaten one out of two total slices. One out of the two total slices. B, person B, has eaten two out of one, two, three, four total slices. We've eaten two out of four slices. C has eaten one, two, three, four out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slices. Four out of eight. And here, one, two, three out of six. Three out of six slices. Who has eaten the most pizza altogether? If these pizzas were all identically identical size. Well, the question is, they all ate the same. Because all these fractions are what are said to be equivalent fractions, meaning they are equal to each other. One half is the same as this, which is the same as that, which is the same as that. Okay, they've all eaten half a pizza. That's a half. This is another way of saying a half. That's also a half, and that's also a half. And so they're equivalent fractions. Here's how you get an equivalent fraction. If you had to, if you're asked to give give one, you just multiply the top and the bottom number by the same number. Remember, the top is a fancy word, the numerator. The bottom is a fancy word, the denominator. So for this, how did I go from one half to get four eighths? Well, I multiplied them by the same number, the top and the bottom. Multiply this by 4, I multiply that by 4. That gives me 4, and that gives me 8. So 4 eighths is equivalent to 1 half. And now there's a zillion different equivalent fractions to 1 half. You can make just multiplying it by a different number. I mean, you can do it forever and ever and ever and ever. Okay, let's go do an example here. Write two equivalent fractions for number four-fifths. So all you got to do is just pick a number. You probably want to pick a small number so it's easy to do your calculations with and multiply the top and bottom by that number. Let's pick two. This times two, that times two. That gives you eight, that gives you ten. Eight-tenths is an equivalent fraction of four-fifths. All right, we have to find two of them. Let's pick a different number. Let's be really creative and pick three. Let's go times three. Do the same to the bottom as well. Times three. Four times three is twelve. Five times three is fifteen. There's another equivalent fraction. You times it by a hundred. Four hundred over five hundred. Times it by a million. Four million over five million. Whatever the deal is, that is your um, the way you get equivalent fractions. Multiply them both, the top and the bottom, by the same number. Okay, you might get questions like this, where they ask you to find the missing number. Find the answer that goes in here. When we look at this, we're given this, and this is the unknown part here. How do we go from here to there? What number did we multiply 5 by to get 10? We did 2. Now this equal sign means two have to be equal to each other. They must be equivalent fractions. So if we did the bottom times 2, the top also has to be multiplied by 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So that's 
has to be the missing number there. What about this? Well, um, going from here to there, how do we go from 3 to 12? We must have times by 4. Do the same to the bottom. Whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top, and vice versa. So this times 4 is 16. And this last one here, how do it's all the way around? Here's our known side, and here's our unknown side. So somehow we went from 25 to 5. How did we do that? From 25 to 5, we must have divided by 5. Do the same to the bottom part. Divide by 5. 40 divided by 5 is 8. So 8 is the missing number. Okay, this all leads us to this. Reducing to lowest terms, which is uh, basically dividing the top and bottom by their greatest common factor. That's one way to do it. That'll give you the answer right away. There's sort of easier ways to do this as well, but th it doesn't always give you the answer directly. The lowest um, answer you can get. Okay, so two sixths. We want to find the lowest um, terms value for this fraction. An equivalent fraction that's as low as this can get. Well, what is the GCF of 2 and 6? This is one way to do it. I'll show you how, okay? So 2 and 6. Let's find the GCF of 2 and 6. Well, the GCF of 2 is just 2 times 1. Or you don't even have to even put the 1, actually, when you do this GCF for 2. You just put 2. And 6 is made up of 2 and 3. What's their greatest common factor? Well, they both share a 2, so the GCF is 2. So we divide the top and bottom by 2. Divide this by 2, divide this by 2, and you get 1 over 3. That's one way to do it. Or, common sense, you would see that you would know that 2 goes into both evenly. You're left with 1 third. You cannot reduce this any further, because no other number other than 1 goes into both these two. So that's it. For 8 over 24. Again, you could do the GCF thing if you wanted to, put the 8 and 24 over here, do the whole factor tree thing and do the common factor, or you can just sort of just uh, work at it. Let's start with 8. What uh, numbers uh, could go into 8 and 24? 2 can. They're both even. You could divide them by 2. Um, what other number can? 4 also can. 4 can go into there twice, and 4 can go in there 6 times. 8 also can. 8 can go into here once, and 8 can go into there 3 times. That, 8, is the greatest common factor. You'd end up getting 1 over 3. That's as low as it can go, so that is the lowest terms answer. Now, you could do this if you didn't realize that they both went into 8. You could just divide this by... The easiest thing is, if you know that they're both even, just divide it by 2. Then you'd get 4. Divide the bottom by 2 as well, you get 12. You get an answer, but it's not lowest terms. It's reduced, but not to its lowest terms. So you can divide it by 2 again, because you realize, hey, I know, they're even, so 2 can go into them. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Divided by, divided by 2 is 6. We've got an answer. And actually, not quite. You can go further. You can divide this by 2. Divide that by 2, which is 1 third. Any method you like. This just does it really quickly, but you got to figure out what the number is, the greatest common factor. And here you just have patience, and eventually, just by chopping it down bit by bit, you'll get down to the lowest common. You get down to the lowest terms fraction. 12 over 20, sorry, 24 over 40. Um, you can think what is the biggest number that goes into both 24 and 40, either by using the factor tree or just kind of working it out common sense. Um, 8 is a number that goes into both these. So you can do that. This divided by 8, that divided by 8. That leaves you with 3, and that leaves you with 5. That's one way to do it. Or again, you can realize, hey, they're both even, so 
2 can go into both of them, and you can just go divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, over and over and over again until you get to this. Either way works. So, here are your skill testing questions. If you could fill in the squares there and there, the one A and B, and then reduce these two questions to lowest terms. Alright, thank you very much. Talk to you later.